Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for joining us today and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. This is Educational Podcasting Today, episode number 30. Today, we're going to be talking to a 17-year-old podcaster. Yes, that's right, a 17-year-old podcaster that... Well, you know, I don't want to I don't want to spoil the surprise, but this podcaster recently won something pretty awesome because of his podcast. I can't wait for him to come on and share with you the, the, the amazing thing and the amazing story that just happened to him not just a few days ago here um, because of his fantastic podcast. Remember, this is Educational Podcasting Today, the podcast that helps you, the educator, learn how to create podcasts and make amazing websites, and that is where we're going to be focusing today you can of course check out all of our links over on twitter at podcasting today and of course you can learn how to do all this great stuff over at educationalpodcasting.today and if you're interested in joining our community you can come over to educationalpodcasting.tips we have a very very active facebook group of about 400 500 or so teachers that are all here together to help each other learn about episodes learn about podcasting and every week we always have a theme on podcasting or web development or 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 branding or, or public speaking anything like that we want you to join our family of podcasters over at educationalpodcasting.tips. And I hope you guys are having a great start to the school year. I have a student on the line today, a 17-year-old podcaster named Noah Tetzler. Noah, how are you today? Welcome to the show. I am awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. I'm so excited to be with you today. I am so excited to be here, too. I want to kind of give the audience a little bit of background here of how we met, and then I'm going to let you tell everybody what it is you do, and I got to say what you do best here. Um, You and I met a few weeks ago. We were on a call um, for Podcast Websites, the great company that we work with here for our TeacherCast site, and you can learn more about them over at TeacherCast.com net slash pw it's teachercast.net slash pw for podcast websites and 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 you know we didn't know each other we've never met but they kept talking on the line about this this student this 17 year old guy who has an amazing website it's got a great audience great looking site and i decided to look you up and i said Oh my goodness, this is a show topic I have never run into. Before we get into all the details, Noah, what is the name of your podcast? Yeah, the name of my podcast is The History of Vikings. And it has nothing to do with the football team, right? That's right, nothing to do with the football team. What does the show have to do with? The show, every episode features an in-depth discussion with a world-class Viking Age scholar. So it's very much about histories vikings and norse mythology and i regularly feature professors from oxford harvard yale and uh every episode is just a discussion about vikings and in norse myth i think it's a really cool way to sort of bring history to life for people you know i gotta say i am not and and look people have known me for seven years this is gonna be a surprise to many i am not a vikings scholar I know, right? Like, that's a weird thing to say, right? I I didn't know very much about the Vikings, but I started listening to your show, which, again, you can check out over at thehistoryofvikings.com. That's thehistoryofvikings.com, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, all the great spots over there. I learned so much about this topic just by listening to a a couple of the episodes this week on, on my way to school. Noah, let's start with the obvious question here. You're 17 years old. You're in high school. What's up with the Vikings? Yeah, I mean, just as far as like, I mean, I've always loved history. That's been uh, probably my biggest passion. I've always been a history buff. um, And I just I've always listened to podcasts and I wanted to be able to share my passion for history with the world, because uh, here in Green Bay, there's not too many people that I can talk history uh, with. But I started my podcast six months ago, The History of Vikings, and 
I just, you know, I think it's a fascinating era of history. Just there's so many misconceptions about who the Vikings actually were. You know, they're painted as sort of these beastly, barbaric figures. When in reality, they were explorers, they were wealthy tradesmen, and they, you know, discovered North America, all these exciting things. So I just think they're an absolutely fascinating people. And I'm just so excited to talk to uh, talk about them with people. Now, again, you you said you're a history buff. Is this something that you might have been sitting in? In your history class, you got to chapter 10 and they started talking about Norse mythology and you said light bulb or was this a story that you might have read on your own and you said light bulb or tell what, what was the, the genesis here of getting interested in this and then what finally made you say there's got to be a podcast? Yeah, so I've I've just loved all eras of history like, uh, you know. Just every era of history, Napoleonic, World War II, everything. Uh, and actually, I'm, I'm pretty big into playing like historical strategy uh, video games on the computer. And I was playing one particular game, uh, and there were some elements of Norse mythology in it. And I just thought the characters were super fascinating. So I got to doing some research, and I read the primary sources for, for Norse mythology, you know, these stories of Thor and Odin and Loki. And I just thought, wow, like... If I could tell these stories on a podcast, that would be super awesome. So the light bulb went off there. Uh, There was probably like one or two podcasts about Vikings at the time. But uh, like most history podcasts, they were just kind of script read and written. So like you're listening to an audio book, which is perfectly fine. But I thought, wow, if I could have discussions with the people who have studied this era of history, what a great way to showcase their scholarly expertise, which so often doesn't isn't given a platform. Uh, So that's kind of the story of how the show was started. Now, when you were reading up on all this North mythology, were you shocked to find out that the Infinity Gauntlet in Odin's cave was a fake? (laughs) Yeah, no, it's definitely I mean, I didn't I didn't I knew nothing about it when I first discovered it. But uh, it just, you know, from, you know, the Marvel movies, that's pretty much all I knew about Thor. Uh, It was just just how different Thor's character is from how he's presented in the Marvel movies. And it was just it was it was a shock and it was super funny as well. So you're in high school right now. You're a junior or senior? Senior. Senior right now. So you're looking ahead for college. We'll talk about that in a little bit here. What do your friends think when they say that you're doing a podcast? And what do your friends say when they say, I'm doing this Vikings thing and I'm getting a chance to talk to all these amazing people? Honestly, yeah. I mean, it was kind of an interesting thing. When I first started the podcast, uh, you know, they thought, okay, that's kind of weird. Like, why would anyone, not disrespectfully, they're my friends, but why would anyone, you know, want to listen to something about Vikings? But as the show started to grow and I started to, you know, do these these great interviews and everything else, they kind of went, wow, like Noah kind of has something going on here. And they, you know, a few of them started listening to it, reached out to me and thought it was super cool. But again, that's just what I love about podcasts podcasting is you can take anything in the world and and talk about it with somebody in fact just a little side note i was somebody reached out to me the other day he's also 17 and He does a podcast about Rubik's Cubes, and I thought, what in the world? How can you do a podcast about Rubik's Cubes? Sure enough, I looked it up, and it's totally legit. Great podcast, and he interviews like world record-breaking speed cubers who are able to solve the Rubik's Cube in so many seconds. So I just that's what I love about podcasting is you can take something so niche and just create a beautiful show out of it well you know our last episode episode 29 we, we had a fantastic podcaster on maria alcoke and she talked about building a niche for her show and her show is called the engine mom podcast and she does a show to really talk to women and empower them to do amazing things in their life and in their career your show is is very similar right if i i went on to i sorry i went into apple podcasts <laughs> and i did a search for vikings and i I don't think I saw more than one podcast that was dedicated to Norse mythology here. Um, you, you know, when they're when you say to start a show, find that taproot, dig into it, build it. And today I want to talk a little bit about that audience that you have. How did you find an audience that is interested or was that not a care for you? Did you just start the show and say, I want to have fun with this. We'll see what happens. 
Yeah, when I first started the show, uh, I remember just talking to my parents and being like, wow, mom and dad, wouldn't it be cool if I could start a show that had, you know, just kind of 1000 listeners like that's huge, like 1000 people is a lot. And I just thought, wow, if I could have a show with 1000 hardcore people that we could all share and talk about Norse mythology and Vikings with. And uh, when I, you know, I always had kind of I always had growth in mind uh, just that, you know, I wanted to build a show with an audience and, and get the word out about my podcast. And I was able to grow the show uh, to much more than just 1000 people, which has been just a blessing. Uh, but the way that I was able to do that is I reached out to people uh, in sort of the the Viking niche. So I would reach out to these scholars and I would ask them to come on my show. And right out of the gate, that made me stand apart in history podcasts because nobody else was doing interview shows, let alone uh, shows with with world class scholars. So I reached out to a lot of scholars and I also reached out to the the few Viking podcasts that were out there and I I brought the hosts on as guests and we geeked out about Vikings together and then I would reach out to other history podcasts and said, "Hey, uh, you know, I love your show. I love what you do, uh, but uh, you know, I'm quite knowledgeable on Vikings and the Vikings were up to some pretty exciting things in the topic of history that you cover. If you ever need somebody to talk about Vikings with on your show, I'm your guy. So I was able to, you know, connect with their audiences as well. Now, I, I, let's just kind of go back there because you, you said a few things here that I want my audience to to really key on on. You had a show. You were looking to grow your audience. You reached out to other experts to bring them on. So that that's 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 you know friend building. You yeah. then reached out to other podcasters in your niche. And I want to start here because that's so important. I've had so many people over the last seven years say, "Who's your biggest competition?" Mm. I don't ever think I've ever looked at another podcaster and said your competition. Mm. How, how do you feel about other Viking podcasters? I can't believe I just put those words together. How do you how do you feel about other people in your niche there? Because you are clearly saying, if you come on my show, I'll come on your show. We're all here together. We're all doing different things. Yeah. No, absolutely. I completely agree. And this is something that I see as well. Uh, that is totally a myth. There is absolutely no competition in podcasting. That'd be like Beyonce saying that Taylor Swift was her competition because people would rather listen to Taylor Swift all day than Beyonce, which is just total garbage. I'm friends with just about every Viking podcast out there. Um, I've connected with all of them and, you know, uh, I've done collaborations. I have a lot of collaborations scheduled. And my, my thought is that we can all work together and we can all grow our audience together. So as you guys are working together and growing your audience together, let's just say that tomorrow you put out a poll to all the Viking scholars that are out there in the world. Would they say long hair Thor or short hair Thor? Ah, oh, I would say long hair Thor for sure. Long hair Thor. We, we There we go. We're going to go Thor from the original and the dark world movies now as we're going through here and we're building these relationships not only with other podcasters but what advice do you have for building it with your audience i, I and I'll, I'll stop there and say who is your audience do you find your audience is 20 to 35 35 to 40 are there's a lot of viking scholars out there that are listening to your show where do you, when you look at that avatar who are you speaking to Honestly, that's that's a great question. I think that my audience is very diverse. I really do. Um, there's a lot of people uh, spread. This is a big thing in Europe, actually, Viking reenactment. So here in the United States, we do a lot of Civil War reenactment, American Civil War. In Europe, uh, Viking reenactment is a huge thing. Thousands of people do it. So I, I get a lot of reenactors. These are uh, both young men and women, probably around 20 to 30. But I also get, you know, sight older demographic more of the the scholarly type but then i also get young people who watch the viking tv show on the history channel and are fascinated with vikings and they they want to know the truth behind them so i'd say my audience is pretty diverse in that way well if you were going to look at the civil war would you be on captain america's team or iron man's i'd say iron man's team why 
I, you know, I, I don't know. I just Captain America. He's he's a cool superhero, but honestly, the the shield. I, I don't know. It's just I love Iron Man. I love that he's very, uh, he's a smart guy. You know, he's he's an intellect. It it takes a lot to be able to to build multi billion dollar suits of this this special materials like he does. Well, is it a shield or is it an oversized frisbee? I would say an oversized frisbee, actually. Yeah. So one of the things that we're looking at doing here is just trying to talk to our, our audience, the, these new podcasters out there, and say, what advice do you have for them when starting this? Again, you've been doing this for six months, and you've been very, very successful, and you have a big announcement to share with everybody about something that's recently happened. We're going to keep teasing that for the end here, Noah. But what advice do you have for that educator out there that's like, should I try this? Now, remember, Noah's 17. He's in your class as a, as a fantastic podcaster, and maybe you're sitting there saying, do I want to start a podcast? Noah, what advice do you have for your teachers? Mm. Great, great way of putting the question. No, I think you should absolutely start a podcast because – it's just such a great way to connect with people. I mean, it's truly a unique way. It's truly a unique kind of media. It's such a unique way to connect with people. Uh, it's not get overcrowded like YouTube or social media or other avenues. And honestly, it's just, I mean, I hear from my listeners regularly and we i respond to their emails and they reach out to me and we just talk about vikings you know there's nothing in it for me other than geeking out with them uh and uh, you know establishing friendships with them no i think you should absolutely start a podcast and once you actually launch your podcast and you get those first few downloads you know, even if they're not big numbers, once you get your first 30 downloads and then it's going to be a huge day when you get your first 100 downloads. OK, that's going to become so satisfying to you. And anybody who's built a podcast knows it. And you're going to want to share with more and more and more people. And the more you build relationships with your audience and other people in your niche, uh, the more people you have access to. And before you know it, you've built an audience of people passionate about what you're talking about. Now, where have you decided to build that audience? And, and are you building it through Twitter? Are you building it through newsletters? Are you building it through LinkedIn? All of the above. Where have you decided to start that process? Again, you've been doing this for six months. So this – the way that I'm going to phrase this is actually kind of this sounds stupid, but but bear with me. So I've actually built my podcast audience through the existing audiences of fellow podcasters. Ah. I've now guested on probably I was just organizing a thing for my about page the other day. I think I've guested on something like 14 shows uh, during the time that I've been around podcasting and also, you know, I've done collaborations, I've done interviews on their shows. One thing I've done is where they would actually take an existing episode of my podcast and put it on their podcast. It's what's called an across RSS. It's very technical, but but that's the basic concept. And I would just get my voice in front of other people's audiences. I would say my social media game, I'm definitely trying to up. That's something that I kind of uh, pushed under the rug a little bit in the early days, but but as the show's growing, that's something I'm I'm trying to do more of. But for me personally, it was definitely uh, getting in front of other audiences. If you were a Viking, what mm. would your name be? If you could choose a name for yourself to be a Viking. Mm. Great question, great question. I mean, the question is, would I have a beard? I mean, I guess you. Oh, have there, there, there's no question there. Yeah, there's no question. Um, I don't know. Um. Gosh, no, no pressure, no pressure at all. Noah, hmm. I don't know. It'd have to beard has to be in the name. I don't know. Blood axe, um, you know, silver beard. I don't know, man. That's a good question. Noah, the blood axe, silver beard. There we go. All there right. <laughs> Again, we're talking to Noah the Blood Axe Silverbeard Tetzner. Um, you can find out more information about him over at thehistoryofvikings.com. Um, let's take a look at your show here, Noah. How long is the traditional episode, and why did you choose to make that the, uh, the, the length of a podcast? Yes, yeah, so – each one of my episodes is approximately 30 minutes long. Um, again, my show is an interview, although I like to say discussion-based uh, show. And I just think 
30 minutes is a great amount of time. Uh, I don't think it's overwhelming for uh, people who are new to Vikings, maybe aren't super into history. They're kind of trying it out. I don't think it's overwhelming, and I think it's just a nice, concise amount of time to be able to explore a topic adequately. Now, do you find it hard to fit everything you need to in those half an hour? I mean, when you sit down with your with your interview, we um, t- t- we talk a lot about show notes here. Like, do, do you have everything planned out? Is it just an organic conversation where you're taking notes? We we get a lot of these questions, like, how do you make great show notes? And I always say, great show notes start before you hit the record button. What's your philosophy on on interview questions, conversations, show notes? How do you put it all together? Yeah, when I first started my podcast, I would get extremely nervous for interviews. I would write down a list of like 10 different questions uh, because granted with each guest, you don't really know how long it's going to take them to answer a question. Uh, I've had guests that have literally answered questions in like 30 seconds. I was like, holy cow. Uh, But you know, I would, in the beginning, I was very nervous. I would write down every single question. Uh, but now I'm getting to the point where, and this probably happened around three months ago. So halfway through my podcasting journey where I've just thought of the questions off the top of my head and I don't do too much research on my guests. I know of them. I know about them, but I don't know everything that they, they stand for or that they're into. Uh, so that when I'm asking these questions, uh, I'm genuinely interested in what they have to say. Like, I don't know the answer to the question that I'm asking, uh, which I think just makes a genuine conversation. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And it was one of the things that we said before starting the show. I said, you know, like, we don't do interviews. We have great conversations here. And you never know what the questions are going to come up. You never know what the answers are going to be. For instance, Noah, somebody might say to you something like, if you had to choose a half brother, would you choose Thor or Loki and why? Mm. You know, I would choose Loki as my half brother. And I would say because, you know, Loki is often if I'm going with the Loki from Norse mythology, Loki is often portrayed as somebody who is just super evil, like just nasty and evil. But in Norse mythology, you know, Loki's very much a trickster. He's very cunning. And a lot of his his schemes are evil, but he also ends up, you know, getting the gods out of a lot of trouble because he's very witty. So I think he could be a, a good guy to have around if you uh, know him well enough. Is there anything in any of the history books about Thor, the god of thunder, falling in love with Queen Amidala of the Naboo, of course? Yeah, not that I've seen yet. I mean, I don't know. We're doing more excavations every day, so you never know. You've only been doing this for six months. I I, I totally get that there. Um <laughs> Let's go. You, you don't mind these questions, I hope, do you? Oh, not at all. No. <laughs> okay, good, because they're going to get worse. So as we go through here, the, one, a couple of the other questions that teachers always ask me about is, you know, how do you start? I have to tell you, you have a very clean and amazing podcasting voice. Um, what kind of equipment do you have? So I use a Heil PR40 microphone. Mm. And it is connected to a Mackie mixer. Granted, this Mackie mixer was purchased over two years ago when I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, But I connect my microphone to the mixer and then my mixer is connected to my computer. Uh, So kind of a basic setup, I guess. And when you record, what's your method? What's your apps? Um, I used to do a zoom h6 handy recorder but i just i actually just record into zencaster really? uh, for all of my interviews and even if i'm gonna do a solo show i just record into zencaster they send me the uh mixed down file and i just uh upload it then now wait you said two years so you started doing this when you were 15 no i i'll say so i started this six months ago but I had wanted to start a podcast probably about two years ago. Oh, and now we've hit another great topic that we talk about a lot here, which is what's stopping you, right? We get the question all the time. I want to start, but I bought a microphone, but um, what made you wait or what, what made you take a year and a half, two years, whatever it was to actually get launched here? Were you just trying a topic or were you just not sure? Did you do a couple shows and then just never release it? And then you launched yeah, I 
honestly, it was definitely a lot of, and this is one thing I run into a lot is a lot of people f- think I have to have the perfect concept for a show. And that was very much me. Uh, I have to have just this brilliant concept. I have to have awesome content uh, as well as some imposter syndrome. You know, I'd, I'd find, oh, this, I could totally do a podcast about this, but then I'd sit down to start writing down ideas. And then I'd be like, what? I, I you know, start to doubt myself. Uh, but when I started, when I finally started the Viking podcast, it was just, you know, I kind of hit rock bottom in terms of just being frustrated. I finally wanted to launch a show. Uh, I didn't know that it would be an interview show when I first started. In My first three episodes were actually me talking into a microphone by myself, reading a script that I had written about certain topics in Viking history. Uh, but then I reached out to a bunch of guests that I wanted to have on the show. And honestly, I barely got any no's. So it was turned into an interview show then. That's a pretty amazing story. Are you finding that because of your podcast, your... I I, want to make sure I get the right question here for you, Noah, because I want to relate this back to school, right? Are you finding that you are... Are you taking school differently at all because of podcasting? I mean, you're 17, but you're interacting with so many adults of such a high caliber. Is that changing anything about you at school and maybe relationships with teachers, administrators? Or is there any correlation that we can talk about between your podcast and your schoolwork? Yeah, sure. So I actually am at the moment homeschooled. Uh, I had been homeschooled in my younger years of childhood, but then I did go to school for a few years and went back to homeschooling probably about a year ago. Um, I started my podcast six months ago, so I had been homeschooling at that point. Um, so it's, it's been nice to be able to focus on certain things. Uh, granted I still do, you know, structured curriculum and everything else, but it's, it's opened up more time to focus on the podcast. So being homeschooled, that means mom or dad was your instructor or you had tutors. That's right. Yeah. My, my parents would have been my instructors. So with that kind of mindset here, if you had a parent as your mentor, as your teacher, And let's just say that that parent was Hannibal the cannibal. Would you rather be Thor or would you rather be Loki if you were to get taught from Hannibal? Hmm. I would definitely say Thor because, you know, Thor is definitely the god of strength, uh, the strongest of all the gods. And man, that hammer can do some serious damage. So would you put the hammer down? I would put the hammer down. Now, as we're going through here, you know, we're looking at this whole concept of audience building. Where do you see yourself? And again, you've got some awesome news to share. We're going to keep teasing that because I know where you're going to go with your show. But where do you see yourself going in the next six months as you turn that corner to complete the year? Where do you want to see the History of Vikings podcast? Oh, that's such a good question. Uh, I'll just start by being honest. You know, one thing that I found is my biggest weakness in podcasting is I still to this day suffer from imposter syndrome, Uh, not only imposter syndrome, but I found that I don't recognize the value of my audience. Like I've built an audience of, you know, 12,000 downloads a week. It's pretty good. But honestly, like to me, since I've lived it, it it just it doesn't mean much. You know what I mean? If I can put it that way. But I've I've definitely started connecting with people that I never thought I'd be able to connect with through my podcast. Um, you know, I recently had on uh, somebody by the name of Jana Yinton, who is a Swedish photographer and artist. Uh, she has a social media presence of about half a million Facebook followers, a uh, massive blog. She actually designs things for Ikea, the furniture store. Wow. And, uh, you know, because I was able to interview her on my show, she shared that interview on her massive social media channels. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's been exciting. I've definitely been, you know, expanding my horizons um, and just reaching out to people. For example, I I haven't heard back yet, but I reached out to a company that makes Icelandic yogurt, uh, very much related to the Icelandic sagas that I talk about on my show. So I'm just expanding my horizons a little bit, thinking outside the box and, and reaching out to, to, you know, companies and individuals that I think would be fun to work with. 
and 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 again, seventeen year old podcaster doing all of this business entrepreneurship. You recently reached out to a certain company. Could you tell us a little bit about that story uh, that you shared with me before we started the recording? And and guys, seventeen year old pod. This is an amazing story that I am jealous over. <laughs> well, thanks so much. No, so. I reached out to probably about a month ago. I reached out to Viking Ocean Cruises. Um, they are a cruise line that sends cruises all over the world, uh, river cruises and ocean cruises. And I simply said, "Hey guys, you know my name's Noah Tetzner. I'm a broadcaster, a historian. I host this popular podcast, and every episode features an in-depth discussion with a Viking Age scholar. You know, uh, I'm writing you today to inquire about a collaboration between your company and my podcast." So I said, you know, I'd be happy to mention Viking Cruises at the beginning of a number of episodes, uh, as well as, you know, possibly even dedicate entire 30 minute episodes to covering in depth some of the things that you offer. Uh, If in turn, uh, you know, I'm trying to think how I phrased it, but essentially, you know, perhaps you would send me on one of your cruises because I am considered media and I would provide excellent coverage uh, and I would record my podcasts live from your cruise. So one of their marketing representatives reached out to me and said, Noah, we'd love to get talking about a press trip. Uh, They asked for my demographics. I sent them some podcast demographics showing that listeners were both well-educated and uh, many of them affluent. And they said, yeah, we'd love to send you on a 15-day Scandinavian inclusive cruise. And uh, that will be happening uh, next year. either August or September, and I'll be interviewing uh, some of their people on the ship, and I'll get to eat and be merry and see the beautiful sights of Scandinavia for no cost other than the flight there, but that even in itself is a good deal, so I'm super excited for that. That is an amazing story, and again, guys, 17-year-old podcaster, he's been doing this for six months, and, and and it's a no congratulations right like that is an absolute fantastic fantastic story hmm. yeah well thanks so much man uh that's super encouraging i i really appreciate it i'm kind of like blown away that that was able to happen i mean it's super exciting i just i love hearing stories like this of podcasters who are able to do these things that i guys there's so much power in podcasting i have to tell you i've heard so many wonderful stories from podcasters who were literally able to make a living off of their podcasts with an audience of 1000 subscribers i kid you not i've seen it done dozens of times And this is just another example of how you're able to do so many cool things through a podcast. Well, were were you expecting that they would come back and offer you the cruise? Were you just expecting to not get something? Um, What were your expectations after you hit that send button? Honestly, I I didn't know what to expect. I knew that it could be possible. Um, I have I'm pretty good friends with a travel blogger who makes a living blogging about travel, and she said, "Noah, you should reach out to some of these. You know, you could absolutely pitch travel boards or you know cruise lines or travel agencies because after all, your podcast is considered media." And I was like, "What? What do you mean media? You know, I'm not CNN or the BBC. Why would they want some podcaster on their cruise?" But sure enough. Sure enough. And uh, obviously, my podcast is very much their target market, which is really cool. Now, what would happen if, say, you emailed them and you said, hi, my name is Noah. I have a podcast. And they wrote back and said, we have a Hulk. Hmm. We have a Hulk. I mean, I got to get Hulk on the show. (laughs) Of course. Of course, you invite him onto the the cruise. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> and that's, of course, when the Hulk looks in and goes, oh, no, this thing flies. This is not going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw the first Avengers yesterday and all these questions are popping out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you obviously have your head on your shoulders. What, what are your future plans, right? You're a senior. You're, you're, you're graduating this year. What are you doing next year with your time after the cruise? After the cruise? Yeah. I mean, honestly, like so much has happened in six months. And I can't imagine where I'll be in another six months. Like once I've hit that year anniversary, 
Um, I'd love to be able to uh, do podcasting full time. I know it's entirely possible. I will tell you, I'm not entirely sure how exactly that's going to work, but I know it's possible. And I, I do believe in myself and it's all about relationship building. I have so many people who are willing to help me and yeah, no, like I want to be a podcaster. I don't know if that's just history podcasting. I don't know if it's production of some sort. I don't know, but we'll see how it goes and we'll see what the future holds. Let's say that I was also a Viking expert and I wanted to be on your show. Where would I go to find more information and how do I get in touch with you to say, Noah, take me on that cruise. Yeah, so you can find me at Noah, uh, or I should say, you can find me at thehistoryofvikings.com. Uh, and yeah, there's absolutely a contact page there. Don't hesitate to get in touch for whatever reason. Uh, and then you can also find me on Twitter, just at History of Viking. Now, I, I want to hit one more topic here because, again, we met because we both have some mutual friends here. Your website and my website are both created with a fantastic company called Podcast Websites, which, again, is teachercast.net slash pw you can check out all the information there they have a fantastic platform talk to us a little bit about your website and also working with the guys over at podcast website to create a fantastic platform to get you those twelve thousand downloads a week and a cruise yeah no i've i'll tell you when i first started my podcast and this is definitely one of the things that you know was I'll, this is why I didn't start my podcast two years until I originally had the idea. I am so not a tech person. Uh, I remember when I started my podcast, it literally took me three hours just to figure out how to hear myself in my headphones. Um, I absolutely was oblivious when it came to web design, but I found podcast websites and they said, you know, we will design your website for you and link your podcast to our website and we'll do everything for you and work closely with you. And my experience with podcast websites has been wonderful. Not only have they made a great website for me, but anytime I want to make a change on the website, they're happy to help. And honestly, they're just great people. There's a great community over through podcast websites, the Podcast Success Academy that has monthly mastermind sessions where you can talk with other podcasters that are in your shoes you can uh, share your successes, your, you know, possibly, you know, you just, you, you get to talking with people and it makes you feel like you're not alone, which I think is so important. And, you know, again, if you're talking about growing your audience, I have been able to do so many things far beyond where I was before. I've been with podcast websites now. We launched it in the spring, March, February, somewhere in there. TeacherCast has grown by leaps and bounds because of the website. And obviously your website is getting you, I'm gonna just say it one more time, dude, you got a cruise out of your website, good for you, right? Yeah. Um, what, what last words of advice do you have here for anybody that's like, I wanna try it, but I'm not sure, or I have a topic, will anybody listen? Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, number one, I think people will absolutely listen to your topic. Uh, if you're interested in something uh, in this world of close to 8 billion people, you can bet your bottom dollar that there are podcast listeners ready to hit that subscribe button on whatever your topic may be. And don't ever feel like you're alone. There are people out there who are happy to share advice for your podcast and honestly you podcast website is, is just one of those excellent tools to help you get your podcast up and running and the trick is just launching uh you have to take risks in life but i honestly don't even think podcasting is a risk what have you got to lose uh it's very low cost and once you've built this podcast you know you can connect with so many people which is just incredible so i would say just just start your podcast you know and once you're in it, you will have not regretted it. And, and not just connecting with amazing people, but someday you might find yourself on a spaceship with a talking raccoon and a tree. Absolutely. Absolutely. What, would you, what would you say to them if you had Rocket Raccoon on your show? If I had Rocket Raccoon on my show, honestly, I mean, hmm, I would have to maybe do an episode about Viking combat techniques. I mean, this little raccoon is just a ninja in his own right. Uh, it's how he's able to move with such speed and agility and, and kill all these aliens. I don't know. 
All right, I'll, I'll ask you one more serious question here. If you were on a Viking ship, on a Viking cruise, let's just put it that way, and you had to choose a captain of said cruise, would it be Nick Fury or Gandalf? Gandalf, hands down. Why? Uh, Gandalf's a wizard. Uh, he clearly can do magical things to enhance the experience upon the cruise, whether that be his excellent fireworks or, you know, I don't know, levitating the cruise, allowing it to fly. I don't know. But uh, I just see a, a really fun time with Gandalf. Uh, no, I'm having way too much fun with you today. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Please invite yourself back on. Maybe we can have a show someday about websites or, or podcast development. But no, look, I, I wish you all the best in what you're doing here. 17 years old, six, six, six months into this, a, a fantastic homeschooled student. Noah, the history of podcast. Sorry. <laughs> That's another show we're doing. The History of Vikings.com. Um, Noah Tetzler, thank you so much for being a guest on our show today. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. It's been an absolute honor to join you, and I wish you all the best as well. And uh, thank you guys so much for listening. I wish you all of the best, and I hope that you will start a podcast very soon. And I certainly hope that you guys do too. If you're looking to start your own show or learning more about podcasting, you can go over to educationalpodcasting.today. And of course, if you want to find us on Twitter, you can do so at Podcasting Today. We've got a fantastic podcasting community, which Noah will be a part of soon you can reach out to him over there over at educational podcasting dot tips that's educational podcasting dot t i p s and we want to have you guys on the show if you've got a great podcast please leave us a voice message over at teachercast.net slash voicemail or email us at feedback at teachercast.net tell us a little bit about your show and what are you up to i would love to feature you guys on the show that just like we've had for the last 30 episodes we of course we want to say thank you guys for making teachercast your home for professional development and until next time my name is jeff bradbury reminding you to keep up the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students <laughs>